Today in our training video, we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, the MCS table, and how you can use it. MCS table, it's one of the things that I love just to teach, but to use because it helps me evaluate the quality of the RF environment. The RF media that our devices are working in is reflected in every single transmission. So every client device, whether it be an, sorry, every transmitter device, whether it be an AP or a client, anything's gonna transmit on, on the RF medium is gonna make an internal decision of which MCS am I gonna use? Now, MCS is a, a grouping of a wide variety of different things from modulation, coding scheme, guard interval, uh, channel width, they're all tied together in this. Now, as we went from 811A and G with OFDM and then moved to 811N, we said, oh, we have some new features we can do. Instead of just, you know, 6, 12, 18, 24, 36, 48, and 54 meg data rates, we now have more data rates to choose from. Great. But how do we categorize those? So MCS is a way to organize those. Today, as we're moving into 811AX, the MCS is getting phenomenally huge. Let's take a look. Here's the 8011AX MCS chart from Semfio. That's Francois's company. Francois is one of our ECS instructors, and he put together this great MCS table for 8011AX, including the OFDM, but also all of the various options in OFDM A for resource units, size, and this is just a subset, it's huge. So instead of teaching off this big monster one, I'm gonna go back to the one we've been using for a while to teach it with an N and AC. This is, the for this part, it's just the same. We I just took out the, the more complex AX part just to be able to teach the same concept. As you move to AX, you'll have more complexity. So let's look at this here, and let's zoom in and see across the top, we have HT, it with an N, the first that used MCS. And then to the right of that, it says VHT, and that's 811AC. And these are the MCS numbers. You note they also work a little different. In N, HT, they counted up 0 through 7, 8 through 15, and they kept counting up. And if you looked at the full table, it goes out to 77. There was over 77 rows of different combinations put together. When AC came out, they went, yeah, we can't do that anymore. This is gonna be hundreds and hundreds of rows, too complex. How about if we switch it up and just go MCS zero through nine, one spatial stream. Then repeat, two spatial streams, zero through nine. Three spatial streams, zero through nine. And so they changed the, the mechanism to do that. So an 802.11 N9 MCS is different than 802.11 AC9 MCS. On the other hand, if you see an MCS that's bigger than eight, then you know you're gonna be back over in the old, sorry, bigger than nine. We can still go to nine. Sorry, I made a little mistake there. Now, you also have a column for a modulation scheme from BPSK to QPSK to 16 qualm, 64 qualm, and now up to 256 qualm. As we go to AX, we're gonna add a new 1024 qualm as well. We'll do another whole video on how the modulation schemes are more or less efficient in delivering information. For the coding, coding is saying, uh, for old fashioned people who've been around modems a long time, this is kind of the, the parody bit that we're gonna be sending to say, if I, I wanna send two bits and only one has to be delivered, so I have 100% spare, that's coding one of two. I send two, I get to keep one. This is forward error correction, and there's ways, uh, mathematical algorithms that make this work. And we can go from one of two, which is very robust, but not very efficient. You had to send twice as much as you wanted to receive. Up to five of six coding. In five of six coding, we send six but keep five. So we have a very small uh, amount of robustness or, or this is more brittle. And so it's one of the ways we can send data faster is by minimizing the coding scheme. On the other hand, we lose robustness in the process. Then the next column over for 20 megahertz wide channels, we have the data rate is going at either a guard interval of 800 or a guard interval of 400. This is based on are you indoor or outdoor, how far you're going to go. 400 was the uh, guard interval that we picked up when we went to 807N. It's a little faster 
a lot of build better, faster throughput because our chips were quicker. And then we have a column for minimum SNR. Now this is a generic, this is not specific for any one client, there's a generic SNR. To get the data rate, you need at least this much SNR. And the RSSI column is, to get this, you need at least this amount of RSSI. Now these two are our generic columns. Uh, the data came from Revolution Wi-Fi's great Wi-Fi capacity planner, and he did the research to come up with these values here. So that's what's on the MCS chart. Let's go through and see how we could play with this. If we come over and look and zoom in, and let's say my client is a 80 megahertz wide capable client. It's, it supports AC, and so when it's going to call and make its request to the AP and say, hello, Mr. AP, I would like to join you, I can do, and it reports back what it can do. I can do 80 megahertz channels, I can do short guard or long guard, I can do MCS nines, because I'm an AC, I can count to nine. I support 256 QAM, 5 to 6 coding, anything in here. And so inside the box, from the 6.5 in the upper left-hand corner all the way down to 866, I can support them. Now the AP may support more. It can go to 1.3 gig, but you can't. So you can negotiate in that association process. And now the AP keeps in its table next to your information, your client device can do these things. And it needs to remember what it can do. Because if it sends the wrong one, it's definitely going to fail. As a client device, you have it pretty easy. You only have to remember one. You remember the AP, and then you stay within this little box. So I have a box from 6.5 all the way over to 8.66. And someplace in that box, the AP can support it, and the client can support it. So the client finishes associating, and it now wants to send a DHCP request. So that's the first thing it needs to do to get on the network. It packages up the DHCP request, sends it down to the radio chip set, and the radio says, okay, how should I modulate and code and choose channel and choose guard interval? How am I going to make the radio actual bits going out over the radio? How do I want to do that? Well, it already knows what's possible. It could do 866. Now, if we look at 866, we can come over and say 866 is short guard interval, 80 megahertz wide channel. We come over and look on this side, and that means I'm MCS9 using a modulation of 256 QAM. That's a very brittle, it's not very robust way of modulating bits. What we're going to be doing is we're putting eight bits on every RF symbol that we're going to send. And we're using a 506 coding, which means we're going to send six bits, but only expect to get five back. So we have a very slim margin of extra bits in there for our forward error correction. But if it works, we get really fast 866 throughput. So the client packages it up, sends it off, boom, with that set of radio modulation features. The bits are put into this kind of a packet. Package, sorry. And then the client sends it that way, and then the AP receives it, and the AP's radio is gonna do one of two things. Well, actually, there's only one thing. If it can decode it, demodulate it, and make sure there's no error, no CRC error, it will send back an ACK. I received yours and we're good. And so if that's the case, it's just going to continue to send them that way. Now this process works in both directions. The AP is going to choose which MCS to send down to the client. The client's going to choose its own. And so in this mode, and you can think, every transmitter is choosing which MCS to choose. And that's great if it works. Now here's the problem. What happens if that 866 didn't work? Now, what am I going to do? The client, sorry, in this case, the transmitter, doesn't matter, up or down, but the transmitter said, I thought this worked. In our association, we had this table and we're supposed to work. It didn't. Why? Now, it could have been because the 80 megahertz wide channel meant that I had 60 B more noise I was listening to, so that means my SNR was too low, which means that's why it didn't work. So the answer to that might be to change from a 80 to a 40 megahertz channel. What if the problem was my forward error correction wasn't robust enough? So the over here, the 5-6 coding should have been 3 or 4 coding. Now there's a cost to that. I would have went from 866 to 780. That would have been the cost on there. 
but maybe that was the problem. Or maybe my 256 qualm modulation was too tight, too brittle, and too complex, and the receiver couldn't demodulate it properly. So maybe I should slow down there. So from the transmitter's point of view, I can decide which of these things I want to do. Do I want to change channel width, guard interval, modulation scheme, or coding scheme? Any one of those could have been the reason why it failed. But right off the bat, it doesn't know. It could have been congestion. I tried to talk and someone talked on top of me. So probably, I'm just going to try it again. So usually what happens is the transmitter device will attempt to send it with an MCS-9. Fail, transmit, fail, transmit, fail, transmit, fail, no ACK, data, no ACK, data, no ACK. And after four, five, seven, again, this is proprietary. Every uh, transmitter manufacturer has a different algorithm. At some point, it'll say, that did not work. What should I do? Now, I know of one device that when it fails at 866, it goes zoom right up here to 6.5. Now, that seems kind of stupid. Like, why would I go from the fastest to the slowest? But it happens to be a voice over IP handset. And what they're thinking is, hmm, maybe when the handset first associated and joined an AP, it was on a really good AP. But it's mobile and it wasn't in a call. So now the human pulling this little phone along has now moved to a different place. I'm still associated to the old AP. I had no reason to go to a new one. I tried to talk. It failed. Let me, let me see if I should change APs. So it goes fail, fail, fail here, drumps to 6.5. And what it's saying is, if I package that same DHCP request, and I want it to go at BPSK, the most robust, slow, very strong modulation scheme, one bit per symbol, very strong, punches right through a lot of noise. Coding scheme, I'm going to send two of those bits, and I only expect one to be back, so I've got 100% spare. I'm going to go with a long guard interval, so take that picture, that out of the picture, and this narrowest 20 megahertz channel. This is as slow as Wi-Fi can go. If I can't do this, then trigger a roam. Now, some vendors will go up, up, up. They'll stay in the same column, and they'll keep climbing up as they change. Some vendors will change columns first and then up. Some vendors go on diagonals. Some have a little Z pattern. For your own pattern, take your device, set up a Wireshark capture, be capturing your device and move around, and you can watch these changes happen dynamically. It will be in the capture to find out what's going on. Now, I don't think, at least I'm not smart enough to have figured out retroactively what the entire algorithm was. But I've seen lots of different algorithm choices going up, down, diagonal, up to the top, stay there for one. Some just go, I'm going to, instead of changing coding, they just slip 256 qualm, 64 qualm, 16 qualm. They only change modulation. Your mileage may vary, but the MCS table is where you can learn all of this. Now, I'm not smart enough to have this memorized. I carry one around with me for that very reason. If you'd like to learn more, come to WMPros.com. We have lots of data available for you, lots of resources, videos, podcasts, blogs, blog roles, Twitter roles, anything you want to look at. Thanks for being part of the community. Mm -hmm.